I've always been good about not reusing passwords for websites, but in my home lab, not really. I knew it wasn't the most secure way of handling things, but creating and remembering separate logins for every app was a hassle. And for some reason, I never really used my password manager for those services. That's what led me to Authentic, a way to bring single sign-on into my home lab so I can manage logins properly while securing one login but protecting multiple applications. In this video, I'll show you how I set up Authentic for SSO, why it's such a big upgrade, and how you can do the same in your home lab. This is Authentic, and this is what I currently have set up. I have to add a bunch of services to it, but for now, this is a good way to demo it. So I basically signed into Authentic, which brought me to the page where all of my applications exist, and then I can select Proxmox VE, log in, and then at that point, I will be logged directly into Proxmox on my new user account. So we're gonna walk through the whole setup of this to make sure that you can do this in your home lab. So the first thing we have to do is set up the authentic Docker container. So to manage my Docker containers, I use a tool called Dockage. I think that's how it's said. In Portainer, you'll do the same, it's just slightly different. But what I'm going to do is create a new Docker Compose file, and then I am going to paste this in. We will talk through it in a second here, but I will have a link to this in the description. So I'm going to give it the name authentic. And then at this point, we have to go through this, kind of quickly explain what's happening. So the only thing I did at this point is I just created an authentic directory. And then in our Docker Compose file, what we're going to do is basically update that path right here. So you'll have to change this on yours. And you'll see as you go through this file that we're gonna be mounting multiple volumes to it. The other thing that's important here is that you'll see these variables here. So these variables point to an environment file. Now this is where it's gonna be slightly different in Portainer, but inside of Dockage, it's very simple. You can basically put everything here. So I'm gonna paste these in here and we'll quickly talk through them. So these environment variables up here basically point to a location in the environment file. So what I did is I came in, I added a password, I added a secret key, and then I changed the ports. The defaults are 9000 and 9443. This is an old test server I've Portainer installed. I'm currently using those ports. So I just updated it to 9001 and 9444. For the most part, everything else can stay the same. So this is a default Docker Compose file. You can change things. I pulled it directly from the uh, authentic documentation. But after that's done, what we're going to do is we are going to deploy it. And once it's deployed, we can come back here, run an LS, and you will see that all of our volumes have been created. So at this point, we just have to wait for authentic to start up. And once it does, we can access the IP address and port 9444 using HTTPS, and we should be able to access authentic. And as soon as you get brought to this page, you can confirm that authentic is properly configured. So now once we know that it's up, what we have to actually do is set up authentic. So you're not going to set it up from here. This is the default login page. So what we have to do is update the link here and this link is going to bring us to the initial setup page. So as soon as we access that, you'll see we can enter in an admin email address and password. So I entered in my email address and a password and we can continue. And then we're brought to authentic. So we're gonna to go to the admin interface. We're going to go down to directory and users and you'll see that this is the account we just created. But we don't wanna use this default username. So we're gonna edit this and then we're gonna change this going to set it to Frank. I'm going to update it. And then you'll see that our default user admin is Frank and not AK admin anymore. And at that point, we're good to go. The only other thing I'd suggest doing is selecting the user interface, then going into the settings, selecting MFA devices, and then creating some sort of MFA. So generally, most people will use TOTP. So you can select this, then you can go through and set up two factor authentication. And at this point, your account will be secured with a secure password that you hopefully used and two-factor authentication. So now with two-factor authentication enabled, what we can do is start to create our providers and applications. And basically, before we do that, we have to have a valid SSL certificate for Authentic. Now the applications themselves don't have to have a valid SSL certificate, but Authentic does. The easiest way, in my opinion, is to configure this with an internal reverse proxy server. 
So I'm currently using Nginx Proxy Manager. I have a video for this. And the one thing I'll say is that this has come up multiple times now. So this internal reverse proxy server, I used it last week in my next cloud video. I've used it in multiple videos in the past. This just makes things a lot easier. So if you haven't configured this, I'd highly suggest that you do. The only thing I did is I created a local DNS record for authentic-test.home, which is pointing to this test authentic server that we just created. So I'll go through, I'm gonna change this, update the IP address and port, head to SSL, select our certificate, save this, and then we can select authentic and we will be brought to the login page. So now we can log in and we will be brought to authentic, but we will have a valid SSL certificate that we could use for our single sign-on. This is very important. If you try and use IP addresses without certificates, it's not going to work properly. So now that we did this, what we can do is start to create our first application. So in order to configure our first application, it's kind of a little different depending on exactly what you're trying to do. So the first application we're gonna create is with Proxmox. And what you'll see is that we have good instructions on the authentic page on how to configure Proxmox. Now on the left-hand side here, you are going to see various different services. The important thing to highlight here is every one of these services is unfortunately a little different, but we're gonna go through a few of them at this point. So the first thing that we have to do is create an application and a provider in Authentic. So if we head back to Authentic and we go to our admin interface, we can select providers and we're going to create a provider. I like to create a provider and application separately in the application section you can create with provider if you'd like, but I like to explicitly set the provider name and that's what this allows us to do. So you're gonna be brought to this section here and what you're gonna see is there's a lot of different providers. Now OAuth slash OpenID Connect is the modern style login. You basically prove who you are once using Authentic, which is the identity provider, and apps accept that proof and let you log in. Now SAML, kind of does the same, but uses an older XML based format. And it's more common with legacy enterprise applications. You're probably not gonna use this much in your home lab. LDAP up here is not really SSO. It's a directory service that apps can query to check passwords and groups. So from a general perspective, you're gonna probably use OpenID Connect by default, SAML when the app requires it. And for most home lab services, you're not gonna use LDAP. Now, some of these other options down here, proxy provider, these are going to be highly app specific. So depending on what you're trying to do and how you're trying to configure it, you might use one of these other options. But for most people, you're going to use OAuth 2 or OpenID Connect, and that's what we have to use for Proxmox. So what you'll see here is it says use OAuth 2. So that's what we'll select. We will give it the name Proxmox VE. And then you're going to have to select an authorization flow. From a general perspective, explicit, slightly more secure than implicit based on how it basically passes the information from authentic to the application, in this case, Proxmox. So we're gonna select explicit here. And then what you're gonna see is we're going to have a client ID and we're gonna have a client secret. But before we do that, we have to enter a redirect URI. So if you look at this here, they will give you the exact URL you have to use. So I'm going to paste that in, and it's very important that you do not have this trailing slash. It cannot have that. So that is our provider. That's really all we have to do, but now we have to move to the Proxmox side to start to configure it. So in Proxmox, we can head to Data Center, Realm, and we're going to add a new Realm. So for the issuer URL, it's very important to have the valid SSL certificate like we talked about earlier. So if we head back to the documentation, you will see that we can copy this, paste it in here, and then we can make some changes. So mine is authentic-test. So this is the URL of authentic. And then what you'll see is it sets it as Proxmox. It actually has to match the exact name you specify here. So we specified Proxmox-VE. So we are going to change that to Proxmox-VE. And at this point, the issuer URL is good. So now the realm, this is just the name that you want to give it inside of Proxmox. Client ID and client key. This is what we're going to get from here. So we're going to copy those in. And then we have our client ID and client key. Default, if you check this off, this is just the default login for Proxmox at this point. I'm not going to use it. 
Auto create users, this is important. If you automatically want to create users, this is how you can do it. This is important because right now we're gonna be signing in with a user that does not have access. So I'm going to automatically create it. And then I'm gonna change the username claim from default to username, which is what we have to use from the documentation. Once that's done, we can add this and then we will be good. So now we can head back to the provider section, finish the setup, go to applications, click create, give it a name. This will be the display name that we'll be using. Head down here, select the provider that we just created. And in the UI section, if you have an icon you'd like to use, this is where you can upload it. So you're gonna select create. And then at this point, our first application has been created. So I'm gonna go back to Proxmox and I am going to log out. We're gonna select this. We're gonna change the realm to authentic. And assuming we did everything right, if you log in, it will bring you directly to the authentic page, which we can continue. And then it will sign us in. And what you'll see is at this point, we've been signed into Proxmox, but we can't do anything because we don't have access to anything. So we're gonna log out, log in with our root user. We are going to go down to the user section here. And you'll see that our new user account has been created. But unfortunately, this user doesn't have any permissions. So we are going to change that by selecting permissions, selecting add, adding a user permission, giving it the root path, selecting the user, and then we're just gonna make the user an administrator, save that, then we can sign out, sign back in with Authentic, which will automatically bring us in, and then you'll see that we can access everything. Now, the one thing you won't be able to access is the shell because you don't have a valid user account. There's a few ways you can do it. You can make changes on the Proxmox host, or if you don't want to, you can just go in and sign in with that root user, and then you'll have access. So. Either you want it to be automated where when you click the shell, it automatically logs you in and you can start running commands or you have to log in. It's kind of up to you. But at this point, Proxmox has been configured properly. Now, the next one we're gonna look at is Bezel and we're gonna set this up in my production environment because I've been wanting to and I just haven't. So if you don't know what Bezel is, it's basically a monitoring service. It allows me to monitor my servers. I have a video on this. I'll leave a pop-up for it now if you are interested, but we're going to configure single sign-on with it. So we're gonna come down here into the settings here, and same as last time, we have to create a new provider and an application, and we have to use OAuth2 and OpenID Connect. So we're gonna go to the admin interface, create a new provider, select OAuth2, give it a name, select explicit, and then in the redirect URL here, this is what we have to copy. And then I'm just gonna update the URL to be correct. And then at that point, we are good. So now in Bezel, we are going to access this exact URL, which will bring us to this user's page. Then we can select Edit Collection, go to Options, and you will see OAuth2 here. So we're gonna enable this, and we're gonna add a provider, and we are going to look for OpenID Connect. And then we have to enter in some information here. So this is our client ID. We are gonna paste that in. We're gonna paste in the secret. And then we have to get to our auth URL. So in the instructions here, you will see that this is the auth URL that we have to use. We're gonna change the display name to be authentic. We're gonna copy the token URL, and then we have to update these links. And finally, we have to change this to user info URL, and then we have to paste that in and update this link as well. Okay, so we're gonna set the provider config. We are going to save these changes. And then at that point, everything is good. So we're gonna go back to Authentic. We are going to finish this, create a new application, select the provider. And then in the UI settings, I just uploaded an icon. So we're gonna create this. We are gonna go back to the user interface. And then if we log out of Bezel, we're gonna see if this works. So we're gonna click Bezel. We are going to select Authentic. It brought up this page. We are going to continue and it didn't work. Now, why didn't it work? And the reason it most likely didn't work is because the email address did not match. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna try to log in and we are in. So the reason it didn't work is because the email address didn't match. As soon as we updated the email address, it allowed us in. So at this point, Bezel is configured. Now the final thing I wanna show you is how I configured Link Warden. And inside of here, it's actually all done inside of the environment file. So I basically had to create the provider and the application in Authentic. And then I went in and I just 
pasted in the client ID and secret, and then Link Warden worked as expected. So the thing I really want to say is that every single application is going to be different. So this documentation here is key. Just follow it step by step and you should be able to get it to work. Now, the final thing to mention, because I know it will probably come up, is how did I change my login page to look like this rather than the default? So when you are logged in, if you go to the admin interface and then flows and stages, you can click flows. And in this default authentication flow, you can edit it. And at the bottom here, you are going to see an appearance settings. So you can upload a background image and you can also change the login section depending on where you want it on the page. So I used content left and I uploaded a new background image and that is exactly how I got it to look like this. Now, overall, one of the most important things to highlight is that it's really dependent on the application in terms of if you can configure single sign-on. So something like Uptime Kuma. You can configure Authentic to work with Uptime Kuma, but the setup process is completely different. You're basically setting up a proxy and accessing it that way. So remember, follow that documentation. But overall, this was a very long tutorial. Hoping you guys got some value out of this. I'm gonna be going through and adding as many of my services as I can. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But other than that, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.